Hi, my name is Mikhail Mercuriev. I'm a small-time gear designer and inventor, best known for the Emberlid stove. But today, I want to introduce you to the world's first production emergency super shelter. I'm warm all over. It is. It's like, if you could imagine what a rotisserie chicken would feel like. That's basically what you're doing is sitting in a, like a solar oven almost. Okay, we're at uh, 75. Okay. Right now, and it's still climbing. We're almost at 80 degrees. There are five heat loss mechanisms that you have to watch out for in a cold environment. Number one is conduction. That simply means touching something colder than you are. If you sit on a cold bench, you're going to lose heat through your butt to that bench. <laughs> it's the way it works. Number two is convection. Convection is wind. You all heard of wind chill, so you know just how effective the wind can be at accelerating your heat loss. Number three is radiation. Uh, a lot of people don't realize it, but we are actually constantly radiating long wave thermal radiation out into our environment, up into space. Next we have respiration. When I take a deep breath of that cold mountain air, it's refreshing, but as I exhale, I'm exhaling warm moist air from my lungs and that's heat coming out of my body finally we have evaporation if you're wet from sweating or you've been in the rain or the snow or you've fallen in the creek the water evaporating from your skin greatly accelerates your heat loss there are a lot of inexpensive actually kind of cheap uh, tube tents and mylar blankets that are available on the market that do an okay job at insulating you against those five heat loss mechanisms. They get you out of the wind and the rain. They help reflect a lot of your body heat back at you. But honestly, one of the little secrets that is pretty well known in the bushcraft and survival community is you can do just about the same job with a garbage bag. Well, all these different shelters, including the garbage bag, they all have the same limitation. And that limitation is they don't actually help you produce heat. All they do is try to stem the loss of heat from your body. And so if you are sick, if you're injured, if you're already wet or malnourished or tired, there's a good chance that your body might not be able to produce enough heat to take advantage of one of those shelters anyways. At the very least, you're going to be miserable and uncomfortable shivering all night long. So how does a super shelter work? Well, it does the same job that all those other shelters do. It takes you out of the wind and out of the rain and snow. It reflects a lot of your body heat, but it does something that they don't in that it can be heated from the outside with a small campfire. You ever notice how when you're next to a campfire or a wood stove that it feels like it warms your bones? It's because it kind of does. That fire is giving off thermal radiation like a big spotlight and it actually penetrates your tissue and starts to warm you from the inside. And so what the super shelter does is acts like a greenhouse by collecting that radiation, by collecting that, that warm energy coming off a fire, and it traps it inside there with you so that it can warm you as well. This is where the genius of the super shelter comes into play. And I wish it was my genius, but it's not. All credit goes to a gentleman named Morse Kohansky. Morse is a highly respected and knowledgeable wilderness living skills and survival instructor. He came up with the concept for the super shelter in the 1980s, I believe. It was inspired by his observations of how igloos function. And it is still today regularly improvised and built in the field by bushcraft and survival nerds alike. By utilizing this method with a little bit of space age materials and put it into a tiny package that you can throw in the back of your snowmobile, in the back of your pack or your day pack, you could be in your t-shirt and a pair of shorts even when it's below freezing outside as long as you know how to tend a small fire and you have, of course, a super shelter. Everywhere we look, we find inspiration. From the trees of the forest, to the lights of the city, to the peaks of the mountains that make us feel so small. Backpacks are an essential piece to the outdoor trekker and urban explorer. There's a reason they've been around for thousands of years. They expand our reach, allowing us to travel further and do more. As adventurers, the backpack has become our most cherished companion. Asgard was founded on the idea that the quality of gear should match the quality of your experience. The 
Yazgard 42 liter backpack. This is a feature rich backpack that's meant to get you from coffee shop to campsite. This bag was made for everyone. Usually you need a variety of bags for all the activities in life. We decided to make one bag that does it all. It has all the key features you'd expect in a backpack, plus many more. Everything from a laptop sleeve to an ice axe loop. We went through five prototyping phases ensuring each model added more durability and function to the backpack. Our number one focus is and always will be quality. We needed a shell fabric that was abrasion resistant, waterproof, but also classy as hell. We landed on a TPU coated polyester with a DWR coating. It pairs extremely nice with the YKK zippers. This ensures that the weather will never ruin your day. We also implemented performance materials such as EVA padding for the back and shoulder straps, military grade webbing, and a breathable power mesh for maximum airflow, ensuring your core is always comfortable. We've taken everything we learned from manufacturing our duffel bag and implemented it into this backpack, plus more. It's our best work yet.